All right, what is up everybody? Here I am today bringing you a video on a new game I've been playing. So this is Arcane Showdown. It is a new mobile game that's been, it's been in early access for a little while. Uh, it's just been released on Android and iOS. Um, you can also play it from Steam, so you can play it pretty much on, on all platforms. Um, as you can see, I've been playing it quite a lot. I've already got 5,000 medals. Uh, if you look at my, uh, where is it? If you look at my, here you go, you can see I've already got 308 wins. So I've played this game quite a lot already. Uh, I do think it's pretty fun. So the game is pretty similar. It's sort of in the same vein as Clash Royale. Um, so imagine Clash Royale, but you have an economy system and you have relevant maps. So instead of it being one map that doesn't mean anything, you do actually have relevant maps where uh, the map matters to the gameplay quite a lot. There's a lot of different maps. I can't show you all of them right now. Uh, but like, for example, the current 1v1 map for the next five hours or so is Fey Hollow. And the current 2v2 map for the next two hours or so is Molten Basin. There's quite a lot of different maps in the game. Um, and they do, they do dramatically impact how the game plays out, which is pretty interesting in my opinion. Um, so let's talk a little bit about, you know, the, how the game basically works. So effectively, you each have your mage, which is kind of like, you know, the king tower in, in, in Clash, Clash Royale. And then you have these statues, which is kind of like your princess towers. Sometimes you have two, sometimes you have three. Uh, both of these maps are two statue maps, unfortunately, so I can't show you a free one right now. And then there's these mana veins, which you have to enchant to, uh, to gain more mana. So you have these nodes at the back. Yeah, if you enchant nodes, what happens is you push up your deployment zone. And you then also push up where you can enchant. So you enchant this, you get to enchant these mana nodes, which makes you more money, basically. Um, an interesting thing in this game as well is you can enchant the mana node more than once. So you can enchant it twice. If you enchant it a second time, it pushes up your deployment zone even more. Unless your opponent has also enchanted their mana node twice. So this gives you the ability to, uh, to deploy your troops further forward on the battlefield than your opponent can if you've enchanted your mana node before they have. Uh, so additionally to that, you can enchant your statue. Enchanting your statue allows it to fight. Like, the statue starts off as just a building with no, no abilities. When you enchant it, it gains some hit points and the ability to fight. And then when you enchant it again, it gets stronger, gets more hit points, does more damage. Um, this thing here is a double mana node, so enchanting this is going to give you twice as much mana. That can be really important in uh, how the map plays out. Not every map has a double mana node, like for example this one here doesn't. Um, so yeah, the way the mana nodes are placed, the way the nodes at the back are placed, the way the statues are placed, all of this can have a pretty big impact on how the game plays out, which is pretty interesting. <clears throat> so I'm going to show you guys the map in a second. Alright, so here we are on a random map. Uh, Copycat has kindly uh, agreed to, to sit here and do nothing whilst I show you guys the game. So this is your mage. This uh, automatically fights. At the start of the game this is your mana bar as as expected you know so these are the mana nodes the yellow ones and these are the nodes you have to enchant to move up your uh, your deployment zone so i'll show you here if i enchant this my deployment zone moves up to here copycat is also enchanted on the other side so you can see our deployment zones match each other now if i deploy if i enchant it again my deployment zone will move up so you see my deployment zone now pushes up against his all right so now copycat has deployed a goblin squad this is a fairly standard swarm squad. As you can see, it attacks the tower. The tower doesn't fight back because it's not enchanted. So if I was to play a Huntress, this is a high target, high single target DPS unit. It's not very good against the, jo the Joblins because they're a squad unit. But the Apprentice is AoE. So she's very, very good against these things. Now, these are the mana nodes. So if you watch if I enchant the mana node here, I'll get more mana. So there it says plus seven per minute. And over here, it tells me my mana per minute. So now I'm on 41 mana per minute. And as you can see, the Enchantress makes short work of those goblins, but the Huntress is not great against them. So now Copycat has deployed his own Huntress. As you see, it annihilates the, uh, the Enchantress because she is a single, single unit and it does very high single target damage. Now, one thing you can do, you can wait for your opponent to start attacking your buildings and then deploy troops onto them whilst they're attacking the building. So as you can see, he attacks the building. My unit gets deployed and kills it for free. All right, now let me see. Uh, I'll just go and chart my tower. The, the different un the different building things in this game, by the way, you've got spells, like that's a tidal wave that pushes back all of his units and does damage to them. Uh, you've got minions, which are like, obviously these are minions that are fighting, and these are minions fighting his minions. And the last one is structures. 
So, there's also there's tier 2 and tier 3 in the game. You have to pay a certain amount to go up in tiers. Every, I think, 30 seconds or so, the tier cost reduces. So it becomes cheaper to tier up. Uh, so we're going to go tier 2 now. Obviously, he's, he's attacking us a bit too much. Uh, and here is here's a structure. So this is a sentry tower. This is one of the structures in the game. So this basically just deploys and it shoots enemies that come near you. Pretty basic stuff. Uh, obviously, as you can see, the towers, once one tower, once you lose a tower, all your other towers get automatically upgraded to level one. Copycat's just killing me here. And then finally, here's the last type of card in the game. This is the champion. So each, each, uh, sorry, guardian. <laughs> this is the guardian. Each deck can play one guardian. It's kind of like your hero power. So my hero power, it deploys these little mushrooms. There's also a passive. Each guardian has a passive. So my passive is when I finish enchanting something, I get some mana. So you see when this enchant says plus 0 0.85, that's my passive. I get 0 0.085 bonus mana when I finish enchanting. And my activated ability is the thing I just showed you with the mushrooms. So we're going to play a little bit here. I'm going to go tier 3. I'll show you the mushrooms again. So I deploy it here and it spawns a bunch of little mushrooms. I think he's playing He's playing the same champion, so I can't show you a different champion, sadly. But yeah, it spawns all these little mushrooms. There's the tidal wave, cancels my mushrooms. Okay, so the enchant also goes down in cost when you lose a building. So if someone kills one of your buildings, your enchant becomes cheaper. This is one of the big combat mechanics in the game. This plus the, uh, here's a tier 3 unit, the Dragonflight. But yeah, this becoming cheaper, and also your opponent attacking buildings and the fact you can kill them whilst they're attacking your buildings. Those are really the two big combat mechanics in the game. Alright, so the basic types of card, as I said, there's minions, uh, buildings and spells. Now the important thing to note is also that the difference between minions is there is uh, AoE minions like the Apprentice. So here it does area damage but it does 22.2. Here's the Huntress. She does 144 damage but she's single target. So she's only good against single enemy units. She's very bad against swarms. Whereas this girl here, very very good against swarms. Very bad versus single target. And then obviously you've got like the goblins are the swarm unit. So they're going to be good versus single target and bad versus AoE. Uh, there's a little I mean, there's more to it than that, obviously. You know, there's like Wolf Riders. This is a unit that only attacks buildings. So it's got like more hit points and damage than you'd normally expect from something of its stats. But it only attacks buildings. So, you know, it doesn't fight units. So like, for example, the Troll does a bunch of damage and has almost a thousand hit points. And this is like, what, a level 11 Troll compared to the Orc which has 400 hit points, but it, this doesn't, uh, this will attack units, whereas this will only attack buildings. So those of you who play Clash Royale will be familiar with all this already. Uh, it's fairly standard stuff. And then obviously there's, there's the, 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 the thing that makes this game way more interesting than Clash, in my opinion, is first of all, the economy system that I just talked about, where you enchant those mana nodes. So you can go for an expensive deck, you can go for a cheap deck, you can go for a mid-range deck, these are all different options. Uh, the maps, I think, are really interesting. The way that like the maps are relevant like different maps are actually relevant in different ways to winning the game um and how your deck plays out and also the different tiers i think are pretty interesting like you can you can build a late game deck or you can build a super early game deck or you can build a balanced deck um and because you control how much economy you have it's not a simple case of i'm playing a late game deck so i'm just gonna do nothing for ages which happens quite a lot in other games of its nature um, you know, you just sort of sit back and defend until the late game where you can afford your expensive stuff. In this game, you have to be doing stuff right from the start. You have to be enchanting things. you got to get stuff going. Alright, so this is the deck I've currently been playing the most. I'm going to play... I'm just going to play a 1v1. And I'll show you guys, uh, show you guys the, uh, the 1v1. Okay, so we're on this map with the double, uh, the double mana over here. So the first thing I'm going to do is mute my opponent because, you know, I don't want to listen to his emotes. Uh, we're gonna enchant this node and we're gonna go straight for the double mana. Okay, so he's also enchanted this side So he might try and push this because this is worth twice as much I get 14 a minute instead of 7 a minute from this one So quite often your opponent will try and kill this if you enchant it first because it's so much extra money He hasn't actually made a push on it yet, which I'm a little surprised by But I'm okay with that. So uh, yeah, we're gonna enchant middle now um, because I'm I've got quite an expensive deck I want to just do econ. So as you see when it gets to 259 this becomes 9 instead of 10 so it goes down in cost Every like, I'm not sure how often the tiering is. I think it's like every 30 seconds or so, but it goes down in cost depending on how long the game has been going on. So obviously, the longer you play for, the more the more you can ramp up. 
This spell here that I'm using makes my chance happen quicker. So it helps me ramp up really hard. Alright, so my opponent hasn't done anything yet. I'm going to make a tier 2 push on this side. So I've got an and Warlock. He's playing a bunch of stuff to defend. I'm going to use Arcane Missiles, which only targets minions to kill off his defensive minions. And we're going to just keep push hard here. Alright, so we pushed in. He's killed the, uh, he killed the Orc, which was our frontline unit, the one that had a lot of hit points. So now he's easily taking care of all the other units that were around there. But I'm going to use my Hero Power, which is the Bloomlings. Drop down another Orc. And thanks to the Arcane Missiles killing this Reaper that he played. This is a Reaper here who has AoE damage. Because I killed that with the uh, with the Arcane Missiles, we were able to take his tower. Because that was his main defensive unit that he had. <clears throat> okay, so this is a Gyrocopter. That thing only targets air and buildings, but we took it out pretty easily. And here is our opponent's champion power, which summons a big-ass dragon. So we're going to use our Arcane Missiles to attack that. It's almost dead now, thanks to the Arcane Missiles. And we're going to play our Tier 3 Dragon Blight. So the Dragon Flight summons five dragons. Very, very strong card. It's one of the best tier 3s, I think, because uh, it just gives you so much so much DPS, because the whelps at the back do a lot of damage. He's trying to counter with the Gyrocopter, but we have so much stuff that we take down the second statue as well. As you can see, my economy is much better than my opponent's. He has nothing. He actually literally like hasn't enchanted a single, uh, single mana node. So we're just completely running him over with massed units. And yeah, we're going to take down his mage statue easily. I'm going to arcane missiles it here just because the game's already over and showing no respect. And there you go, we take down his final statue and we win the game. Alright guys, so I'm going to be uploading... Uh, I, did this, I did this draft event. Uh, this was a draft event, which was pretty interesting. It works a lot like the Clash Royale drafts, if you played those, where you're offered two cards, you pick one, your opponent gets the other, and then you get the four cards they didn't pick plus your four cards. Uh, I did this earlier today. I'm going to be uploading this as a separate video. So you guys can watch me play the draft there. Um, but yeah, I mean, the game already has 2v2. It has 1v1. It has, you know, it's got events. It is, of course, a, a mobile game. It does have levels, which is, you know, it is, it is a little bit pay to win. That is the way it is. Uh, but yeah, I actually think this game is really good. And like I said, I've been enjoying it a lot. Um, as I can show you, as I said at the start of the video, I've already got like over 300 wins, so I've been playing this game a ton. Um, and yeah, I mean, if you guys are looking for a new mobile game, I think this is actually a really good one. So give it a try. Alright guys, I'll see you next time.